Here's how you get the hue motion sensor working with your hue hub. Uh, this sensor's already been powered up, so we're not going to talk about some of that, but if you need to get in here for any reason, uh, you could just unscrew that and you'll be able to get in the back and then get to your battery. Now, in terms of the device, you may need to reset it, and in some cases, uh, you won't have to do this, but I like to do this just to make sure things are clean and ready to pair with your Hue Hub. So I'm just sticking a pin in the back and you should see that little green light right there. And I'm going to let it go for a bit longer here. And then I'm going to let go and you see the flashing. There was flashing green and red. Now, inside of the Hue Hub or the Hue app, you are going to need a Hue Hub. And I went over into settings and then I went into accessories. This is sitting over here flashing. If this doesn't work, you can just redo this process. But there's the motion sensor. I'm tapping on that and now we're going to get this paired. They're asking which logos on the top. Okay, it's Philips there's a couple of models of this is the LED blinking why yes it is and now it's just searching if your hub for any reason is not finding this again you can redo it or another option for you is just to bring this closer get it away from interference sources like Wi-Fi devices so there you go it's paired for me you can put it in any room. This will help you with automating those specific rooms, or you can put it into a zone if you've created a zone there. Now for me, this is gonna end up in my kitchen. I'm gonna hit the kitchen. One of the reasons this works really well in the kitchen is just that magnetic backing. You can actually just get this stuck to a lot of surfaces very easily. Now they've put some default scenes, so during the day it's going to make it bright, during the night it's going to keep things fairly dimmed, but you can customize all of this. This is inside of settings, under accessories, go back into that sensor, and now you can set it for, again, rooms. If you wanted to select multiple, you can do that. So, uh, for example, my kitchen, fairly close to the front entry, maybe I want to bring those two together. I can also choose the zone to place this into. So uh, here, this is for my studio. And now you can see it overwrote those other two rooms that I had it in. Uh, but now that I've selected zone, you can see I could choose all lights. So this could be used to trigger your entire home if you'd like. Now I'm going to go back to kitchen really quickly and now you can set the behavior of this. You don't actually have to have it do anything. You can pick from all these different scenes that are in your room or your zone so that can be very helpful to use this to trigger those scenes. Uh, but you can choose do nothing between certain times. This is after the day behavior so after 10 minutes turn off everything. So this is turning off your lights after this has no motion on the sensor for 10 minutes. And you can set that for different time periods. I would say uh, set it a little shorter. This is actually a really responsive motion sensor. Uh, it'll respond every 10 seconds if you're in front of it. And it has quite a range and a distance. So you can set the same things in the evening so you can see the different time periods. And again, you can set a different scene for the evening. Plus you can set the, the behavior after it no longer sees motion differently for the evening versus the daytime. So if you want those lights to go off a little faster there, I set it for three minutes instead of five during the daytime. There's a couple of more settings down here and they're a little tricky to work with. Now the daylight sensitivity, so what it's saying is based on the currently measured daylight in the room, motion will trigger the lights. But if I take my hand off, this is the sensor right here, 
then based on the lighting right now in my space, even if I'm in front of the motion sensor, the lighting in the kitchen won't come on. Now you can set this into different spots. So you can see I went all the way to the top, pretty much no matter what the brightness is now, it's gonna trigger my lights. But as soon as I come off of that, cause it's very bright where this sensor is reading the lighting, then it's, it's gonna show, okay, it, will, uh, it won't trigger the lights. So you can see, I go over with my hands a little, it gets a little darker in the space according to the sensor. Yep, this setting will trigger. So what this comes down to is the higher you set this, the more likely your lights are gonna turn on no matter what the brightness is. The lower you set this, the darker it's gonna have to be in your space in order to get the lights to come on. You can see, in order to get the lights to come on here, I've had to cover it almost completely. In general, leaving that somewhere in the middle is gonna work for most families. The motion sensitivity is another setting that you can adjust. I find you just basically want to have this somewhere in the middle. It's a really good motion sensor. This will change uh, just how often it triggers or how often it thinks it is seeing motion. You also have the ability to reset the device or delete it from the app if you ever want to move it. This is a Zigbee sensor, so it can be moved to a lot of different systems. But in general, I like using it with Philips Hue, so there you go. Go forth.